What's the matter? What's wrong? So it touched the back of my head. Tonight, most haunted answer a call from the family that live in fear. Tonight. Oh my God! To most haunted. Imagine your house, a family home like any other, but then add three decades of disturbing phenomena, with several spine chilling poltergeist encounters thrown in for good measure. That fate has struck one particular abode in Devon, but can we help to end the reign of terror that exists at Lower Southwood Cottage? Lying on the eastern outskirts of Exeter, Lower Southwood consists of two cottages that both belong to the same family. Parts of this modern-day home still date back to its original construction in the early 17th century. The land was predominantly owned by the St Hills until 1812, when the Porter family took charge. And apart from hosting the RAF during World War II, Lower Southwood has acted in line with normal family life. So what was the catalyst that sparked its sudden influx of spiritual activity? And light anomalies and temperature changes aside, why is this cottage dominated by varied and often violent tales of poltergeist behaviour? I would say that this is probably one of the most credible places that most haunted have been to. These people have no axe to grind. They do not sell haunted weekends. They're not open to the public. They're, there's no reason for them to get most haunted here, apart from the fact that they're interested in the ghosts that they've got and they want to find out more about them. Um, to me, it's incredible. It, it's mainly poltergeist activity here in the place. The most frightening for me was the third of the third of the third, when I got up in the middle of the night and found a whole room completely trashed, uh, furniture upended, a table turned on its sides, uh, knives stuck in a knife block, which is quite worrying for me because I have small children. Um, and for the whole evening, things were really, really quite, quite scary and frightening. Throughout the whole building, poltergeist activity is prevalent. Here in the sitting room of cottage number one, the owners say that a mischievous spirit likes to turn this coffee table upside down and move other objects around the room. But this isn't the only spirit that allegedly inhabits this particular part of the house. Here in the main bedroom, the current owners and previous tenants have reported seeing the ghost of an old lady who likes to poke her head around the doors. Also, dark figures have been seen floating across the floor. Probably the most amazing case is that they used to keep one of the cats in a cage. And one day they came downstairs and found the cat out of the cage and the dog in the cage, with the door of the cage closed, and a chair up against it. Now, one or two of these things you can explain as, as yeah, mistake, someone's playing pranks, but these have been going on for the best part of 30 to 35 years. It's driving the family mad, and they want to know what's going on. All over Cottage 2, heavy footsteps are often heard and strange mutterings echo throughout every room. The ghost of a little girl has been seen many times and is often blamed for the plethora of toys that go missing. As well as this phenomena, the ghost of a man wearing an RAF uniform has also been seen. I definitely believe that this place is definitely haunted. There's no underlying, oh, it might not be, it might be. I've seen things, I've heard things. This place is definitely 100% haunted. A poltergeist is said to have made its home here in the kitchen, where it likes to take knives out of the drawer and stick them in the top of the breadboard. People also feel that they're being watched in here, and they generally just don't like the feeling in this particular room. So what has a hold over these cottages? So much so that the owners felt compelled to call in the most haunted crew. We have 24 hours to find out. So, having answered this family's call, how can the Most Haunted team assist those that live here? 
and as parapsychologist Kieran O'Keefe and I were keen to discuss how do they cope when faced with so much upheaval. Kieran, this is really exciting because, of course, this family called us in to investigate their property. Um, how they're managing to live here with what they're reporting as paranormal activity, I, I don't know, I don't understand. It's very, very strange. And also, speaking to the family, um, even though they have called in the most haunted crew to investigate, they seem quite comfortable with a lot of the phenomena. You know, they're reporting what they call poltergeist activity and some of the childhood experiences that the mother has had. They're reporting it in such a way that they do feel very comfortable about it. So I'm not overly concerned about the family coping with the activity, but I'm interested to see what we come up with later on. And what sort of things that you've been hearing from the family are interesting you the most? The main thing is what they refer to as poltergeist activity, and I think they misunderstand the term. Essentially what they're talking about are as ports and apports. That's objects that go missing and then inexplicably return. Now, with a lot of these particular cases, when things go missing, you can just put it down to memory, just you forget where you put it initially. But with a lot of their objects, they appear to um, show, or reappear, a couple of weeks later in a completely different area of the house. Now, the interesting thing about this is it's not focused around one particular member of the family. It appears to be happening to the grandmother, also the mother, and also now the children to some extent. And because of this generational difference, I think parapsychologists would logically argue it's not so much a PK energy, but maybe more of a spirit energy that we're looking at. So will we be privy to the things that these two adjoining cottages regularly report to go bump in the night? And with regular medium David Wells also eager to answer our questions, Lower Southwood seemed the perfect place to welcome our new spiritualist medium, Gordon Smith, into our investigative team. And surely the phenomena witnessed here ensured that a baptism of fire awaited our new recruit. So would our wind of change also sweep out the troubled times said to exist at Lower Southwood Cottage? Very interesting place, this event. Um, mm -hmm. The moment you come into this room, you can actually feel, I would say, what I would call uh, some kind of disturbance, um, where there's been actual physical things moved around. Uh, I don't know that there's anything associated just with this room or the house. Mm -hmm. I would imagine things have happened a lot more. Yeah. I don't feel a person sort of trapped in this room or held to this one room, but I certainly get a really vibrant energy in here. And it's causing the the furniture to move around? I felt not only furniture moving, I hear noises like there's, there's some kind of almost real poltergeist noises, the noises that people would associate with poltergeist. So the family that live here, they're not imagining the things no. that are going on? No, I wouldn't say so. And it's, it's definitely yeah. spiritual activity, it's not them causing it? <laughs> I think that there's a variation. I do feel a spirit presence uh, coming and going. There's, there's moments where I feel his presence very, very strong. I feel as though it's the father of the woman. Uh, who, who owns the house or who's uh, associated with the house, and I feel his presence really strong here. I also get the sense that he's died here, not in this room, but here. Okay. He's died in this house. And do you feel he he is solely responsible for this furniture moving throughout the no. whole house? No. No, I don't think that that's all spiritual activity. I think he has tried to attract people, but I do feel as though there's something among the people themselves mm. that is actually furthering this or causing it. And it's almost like if they've seen something move, then they first of all look at it as something supernatural, which it is, but in their minds it's been heightened. And there's also a connection to one of the women in the house that I feel strongly misses him, and there's a pull on him. Oh, I see. And, and there's a lot of stuff coming from her, I would say, as well. Okay. And it's her need, and she's quiet, and it's in her quietness. She's almost demanding his presence. Our solitude and heartbreak the real reasons that a poltergeist strikes within this building. And in addition to identifying a protagonist, how can Gordon and David help a family to cope with their continual nightmare? Another night of hauntings and hysterics await us at Lower Southwood Cottage. <laughs> this 
this may outwardly appear to be everyone's ideal country cottage, but Lower Southwood's two adjoining homes aren't all what they seem. However, we still can't be sure what connection a poltergeist holds to the homes where it regularly tips tables and plays havoc with electrical appliances. Our new spiritualist medium Gordon Smith has though sensed a link, one that strongly ties a male soul to a grieving lady. But would his sensory perceptions increase as we continue to explore this home? I mean, again, th this <laughs> still feels like this activity to me. Uh, lots of real, almost earthbound activity where there has been physical things happening around here. There's also been something happening with electrical things. Right. Like computers switched on or That's right. something like that has happened because I can feel all of this... That's what's happened to ...angst. Me. I just feel it as angst. But I know that there's just... I can do... I can work off of that, is what I'm getting. What, the spirit person mm -hmm. is working with the and electricity? And he can work... It's almost like he... Uh, I've got to say the grandfather because he obviously is connected with the children mm. and that's how he's, he's making me feel more like the grandfather. Even though I've got to say his daughter, she wears his ring or she does some, there's something connecting the two of them together um, that she keeps of his. There's something there. And there's also um, one of his last memories was of being honoured as a military man, as an older man. And he's here, he's really happy to be here because it's like he's trying to sort out a lot of this stuff. And I do believe that he... It's like he died and I don't know if he died in the, in the toilet. <laughs> but there's something like he that. Died, he died in the bathroom. Well, that's what it felt like. I was going to the toilet and, mm. and then I died. But that's the power of the man. At one minute he's in my head and then the next minute he's gone. This part of Lower Southwood has been occupied by Barbie Thomas for nearly 30 years. And until 2000, it was also home to her husband, Mike. But despite his unfortunate passing, it does appear that his spirit and soul remain in the house that they loved and shared. Right, this, I mean, this feels like his room, this feels like where he should be. Uh, I feel comfortable in here. All right. And I'm sure he's made himself known in here, his presence has been felt. Uh, I do feel as though he's come up, sat in the bed, or... It's almost like the woman has actually felt his presence close to her, because I can almost feel that I want to go and sit here and just sit beside her. And she knows it's him. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and that's fine. That's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that, people sensing and feeling the spirit world around them. Nothing wrong with that at all. It's only if there's other stuff there that's not coming out. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that there's, there's other emotional stuff that's, that's not been allowed out. And I think it's something to do with the nature of the way the man passed, mm -hmm. that there's still a lot of grieving that was not done. And as long as she feels in his presence close, then she doesn't need to grieve. I see. So that's stopping that natural process. Are you happy to talk to her about this? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I have no problem with yeah. that at all. So Gordon and Mike's widow, Barbie, did spend time alone in private to discuss thoughts, feelings, and to enjoy a communication that her daughter, Penny, was later able to discuss with us. Penny, how do you feel that that reading went with Gordon and, you, and your mum? It's fantastic. Yeah? Absolutely brilliant. What was, what was good for your mum to hear, do you think? It kind of really confirmed a lot of things that she felt and thought anyway about um, my father being sort of in and around with her and being here. And when she goes away on holidays, that he's with her as well. Mm. And did Gordon get He did, right? yeah. He absolutely confirmed that he's, at, you know, constant with my mum because they've got this bond together. Mm. That's great. Which is really comforting for her. Okay, and do you think this now is going to help with the atmosphere mm. in the house? Oh, absolutely. I think it separates what's uh, spirit contact from the other stuff that's been going on, the sort of portuguese mm. stuff, and knowing and, and being able to identify, like your father being able to give me clear information on his life, the things, his job yeah. and all the things. I, I was asking him for evidence. OK, if you're here, you tell me things that I can't know. And, and, that's and what he knew, definitely. He knew my father's name and the profession that he was in as well. Oh, so that's fantastic. Absolutely, yeah. So you, I've seen you and your mum with big smiles on your faces wandering around. So it's going to make a real big difference to the house and the atmosphere now. Yes, I think so, definitely. Great. 
Has this family finally found an answer to some of the many questions that puzzle their daily home life? Although determining how many souls exist here may be a different matter. So we asked our other medium to take in the weirdly wonderful atmosphere of Lower Southwood's two buildings. And David Wells begins just where Gordon had, in cottage number two's dining room. This room doesn't feel extra specially active. All I can say is that since I've, I've came into the building, I've been aware of one energy around me and it seems to be, I, if I had to say it's male because it's not, it's not very well defined, it's one of these, you know, classic shadow things. This one seems to me like um, an attention grabber, therefore he will move things. Okay. Do you think he's here all the time or...? Yeah, he's grounded, yeah. Definitely? Yeah, definitely grounded, this one. Right. Most definitely. Do you think he's a previous resident of the house then? Yes, yeah, undoubtedly. Right. How long ago would you say he would have lived here? I would say um, a couple of hundred years, maybe even more than that, maybe 250 years ago. At 400 years of age, this property has encountered its fair share of occupants. And although few other details exist, the time frame given by David would suggest the same period that saw these buildings once act as a farmhouse. But we needed more on our attention-grabbing male energy. Perhaps the playroom would encourage more of the same. It's a bit more twitchy in here. Twitchy? What do you mean? Um, well, it feels a bit more of a presence. A bit more... Right. It, it, I tell you what it almost feels. It almost feels like nippy to me. The energy feels like, you know, it's nippy. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's, it's picking at me. Mm. Who is? The same dark it's the shadow? Same, it's the same one. It almost feels like he's he's in my face. He's like this. Ooh, and he's... He's, he's kind of, the, and this is energetically, he's not poking me, but the energy is really spiky. He's making the, this part of my face really numb. This part here really numb. Is there a reason for that? This is, this is energetically yeah, or... your, your third, well, it's your third eye. It's, right. So it's this part of me that sees, if you like, that creates the pictures inside my head. So it's, it's banging open. Yeah, because we know from neurology that's the pineal gland, that mm. particular one, you went like that. Right. Just asking. Some people say that that particular area of the brain is associated with psychic activity, so it's just interesting you say that. It would make sense for the you know the chakra, the energy points in the body. That's the right. the that's pineal the area. gland. Yeah. Wow, it's the first time I've heard of it. So, can you actually see? Are you going to make a clearer picture of what this man would have looked like now? He's got um, quite a long, pale, drawn face. Um, Classic, I think, ghostly face. I mean, I know that sounds a bit old Hammer House-ish, but you know what I mean? It's a very, very long, kind of lurchy Adams Family face. Is it? Yeah, it's not, not particularly attractive, I have to say. And what's he wearing? It's quite Can scary. You see? It's just black. It's all black. The beauty of this investigation is that we're covering not just one, but two properties, and both are regularly subjected to intense bouts of possible paranormal phenomena. So we move next door to the home of Penny and her husband Simon. Different walls, but, as we're about to find out, the same old energies. When I come in here, the first thing I want to do, physically impressed on me, is I want to turn... I want to just get this and... cope it over. Really? <laughs> turn it right over. Knock those apples flying. Why? Who's doing Shove it? Shove furniture about. Who? Who's doing it? It's this man again. It's this male energy again. That's what he's done. So he's done, it's almost like marched in and just went <clears throat> But why, why is, he's got to be angry to do that. It is to me, anger or attention seeking. That's what you said, yeah, yeah. you said earlier on, it's attention right. seeking yeah. and you think that's the same. But I bet he doesn't do it and they see it. No, it's always they'll come down and things and will done. be moved, yeah. So the, this family, this they're, not, they're not imagining these things? I don't think so. It's almost like this is in his way. Now, would he... So if he came in from here and he was going this way, that would be in his way. Do you know what I mean? Oh, right. So I sense as if he's doing that... Get out of the way. ...gets that out of the way because he wants to head that way. Right. Richard, is any of this making sense to you? Yeah. Shall I wait until I'm still here? Yeah. Yeah, very much so. Um, there's a great history of, of, of poltergeist activity in this place. 
things are pushed and moved and turned over and um, they don't know who it is. Would, would, this, would this male spirit, if pushed, if they did something that they didn't like or they renovated somewhere or changed the house that he didn't like, do you think he would, be, he would do something more violent? Do you think he's capable of that? Um, I guess the only the only way he could do that is, and I don't mean this to sound frightening to the family in any mm. way, shape or form, is to almost, not possess, but to encourage... Somebody upstairs. Mm. Did you hear that? I was just going to check upstairs yeah. to see if there's anybody there. Yeah. Just I was just going to double check. A, sounded like a boom, like a footstep upstairs then. And very often, I know that um, when it comes to poltergeist activity, Kieran will put forward possibly the theory that someone in the house mm. is in their sleep. And, and I guess if you put a webcam or a camera in a room, you saw Mrs Smith come down the stairs and tip the table over, then quite rightly Kieran could say, well, she's doing that in her sleep. Who's making them do that would be my, my answer to that. Well, that's really interesting because that is, you know, one of the big things that happened in, happens in this particular room is that coffee table going... All over the place. And it feels like he's heading there. And he's heading there. I wonder if there was a, a another a doorway or something like that. Um, Kieran, is there anyone up there? There's nobody upstairs. I checked all the rooms. Did you hear that sure. at the same time as yeah, I heard Yeah, I did. It? I mean, you're interpreting it as footsteps. Mm. I definitely heard a noise yeah. upstairs and there's nobody up there. That's interesting. So we appear to be in the presence of two men. One that we can name, but another who remains embedded in this property's past. And to add more weight to what we've heard, a door and stairway did indeed stand in this wall. Whilst poltergeist activity only seems to occur when the house is empty or its residents are asleep. But what could we expect once Lower Southwood's lights go out? There is something in there. Yeah. There is. There. What was that noise? Today, most haunted are in Devon, at a family home that continually attempts to fluster its long-standing inhabitants with random acts of poltergeist activity. Two particular male souls are now thought to be responsible for such phenomena, although their physical lives seem to be divided by two centuries. Past experience shows that any activity tends to take place at night, so once the lights had gone out at Lower Southwood, we split into three separate groups. Whilst Rachel, Joe and Stuart investigate cottage number two, Kieran, Richard and John Dibley settle down in the living room of cottage number one. That enables me to join both David Wells and our new spiritualist medium upstairs in the same building. And as you're about to see, Gordon Smith's first venture into night vision wouldn't disappoint. Somebody do something. See, now this is the thing that gets me. You can feel all this high energy <clears throat> and you're like, right, come on. I'll need to make like a child so that I can get my energies up to see if they can throw things at me. Come on, move the table. I'm really why? I don't know. Just suddenly came out me like, oh. I'm wondering if we put the uh, televisions on all on hash. And see if it actually. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, see, like the white noise. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The shame there's no sound that can come out of it, but it's energy, it's electricity. Is there a window open anywhere at all? No. I think so. Is it not? No. Joe, can you just check? No, I'm What about that one over there? We've got a breeze. <laughs> yeah, I've just had a breeze come across my face. I'm not saying that, I, I really have. I mean, I suppose if you stand here, you, shot, you probably feel the breeze. I can feel anything. No, not really. You can't, I can't feel anything from here. So it must. I don't know. Is there a draft? There's no draft coming down there. It's not windy now either, Stuart. There isn't a draft coming from there because I'm getting a cold breeze all around me. I'm just going to start calling out now, guys, so uh, downstairs as well. OK, we'll keep quiet. Is there anybody here? Are there any spirit people here in this house with us now? 
Are there any astral beings? I feel tingling all around here. Yeah? But I don't know if that's me just, you know, mm -hmm. suddenly becoming aware of everything. Yeah, really. yeah. Don't forget, we've got the hallway to do as well, and that other bedroom. Should we go down there? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Go on. David, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm OK. I think I've got a bit more of a fix on the man. He seems, um... Which man is this? This is the one I've got. Yeah? yeah Fabulous. This is a very strong feeling here. You are right. Yeah. Telly's gone bizarre, actually. It's not really off, but it's... Oh, God, yeah. It's weird. And did you, do you feel a spirit Yeah, person? I get such a strong feeling around me there. Well, they click off normally after 15 minutes, but that's not been on for 15 no, minutes. No, no way. Shall I put it back on? <laughs> yeah, I would. OK. Oh, but it's counting down. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's got anything to do Could with it. Be. Well, we'll check again if it goes yeah. off. Mm -hmm. But what is interesting is that you felt something. I honestly something. felt something there. What's your head on these pictures? What's that, Rach? I, I saw something move across that room, but I don't know if it was my eyes. Well, things have been seen moving across. In there? In rooms. Because I thought... Shadows, shapes, people from, and... So, say Joe was over there, it was mm. there about Joe's height, but I don't know from a distance. What? I just thought I saw something down there. It's not gone off, has it? No. Oh, well, that's bizarre, because it was on... That's bizarre. I'm glad. I am. The, as soon as it went off, I thought it'd be almost time yeah. Yeah, the same as it, especially when I saw the number counting but down. Didn't but didn't we research it? We found out it was about 15 minutes. It, oh, yeah. it probably varies from TV to TV. Yeah, it probably but, does. Mm. But that, the fact that we've done it again and it's not gone off at the same time. Mm. That, well, that, yeah, that, that's what we wanted to see, isn't it? That's good. Well, that's good. If there is anyone in here, if, you, if there's someone who Rachel saw. Could you try and move something or make a noise for us so that we do know you're here? It's a really nice room, isn't it? Oh. Are you all right, lovey? I think it... No, the, the energy's definitely here. I sent to John earlier, it feeds... It seems like a big mass of energy. Yeah. But it's... It's just not directed, is it? It's, no. I feel it's one of the. Do you know what it is, Gordon? I feel it's one of these type that that all of a sudden will shoot. I, I don't Absolutely. know why I'm nervous. It'll do you shoot think it's in. It's going to jump at us. What? Did you just do a big bang? No. No. We just heard noises oh, down here in the kitchen. Have a look? Yeah. Yeah, I'll come down with you. Freezing. You're freezing. It's cold down here, actually. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Let's go, cool. Sure. You all right? What the hell was that? Yeah, something that's flown about. Don't worry. What was that? Did you just drop something or bang we're something? We're, we're, all three of us are sitting in here. Did not drop did, something did you hear or that bang glass something? Then? No, yeah, we also this obviously is can't fit in here. Here something. We're, we're, this door was shut. OK, we were out here. Like a pencil or something, didn't we? Is it a glass? Or? Something or? It sounded like a, oh. sounded like a glass Bottle top. jar with... Yeah. Something. What's that? Is that paper? Did you... No, what's that? Oh, that's it. <laughs> What is it? What is it? <gasps> what is it? It's a medal of some sort, is it? A medal? It is a medal. Why? Not the fire one, then you know the one that we were in. The rocking chair. Yeah. It's creepy, isn't it? Because you've got a sense of there's just something in there. Yeah, there is. There it. What was that noise? Don't know. There's just something in there. Yeah, there is. There it. What was that noise? We've been sitting in here and nothing's happened. Well, where did it and come from? Well, we heard something down here and that's when Wigan came down and I said, I'll come with you. And then but we I'm just stepped there. Like a bottle to us. Okay. Well, we asked for something, it's happened. We later discovered that this was a medal belonging to Penny's son, and although no real significance can be found for the movement of this particular object, a mood of anxiety was clearly growing in both cottages.
And having sat down in the kitchen, Gordon and David's initial lines of communication would see an earlier sensory perception reappear. David, are you feeling it getting really intense in here? Yeah, very. I mean, I'm feeling the atmosphere closing in on me. He's right behind me. He's, yeah. Well, in fact, he's not behind me, he's on me. He's on you, yeah. Mm. I'm the same. This is this other gentleman. Mm. What the hell was, was that? There's light in all these. No, did you hear that? Yeah, in there. It was like a cough or a groan. That was a wheeze, I thought. Yeah. That's when you mentioned that chap. I'm seeing a strange light around you, David. I'm freezing. There's a draft right behind It's my right behind you, and it's just he a is, light I'm not, seeing. He's on me. He's on me. He's yeah. answering. Is this a guy of an older time? Yeah. It's it going back, this long. man, he's going back. It's not part of the family. I can actually no, see his face. What does his face look like? Oh, right. Kind of, I don't mean whizzing, but there's a kind of lo longish, no, hooked nose. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. yeah That's so the way I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at David and seeing that, and I know it's not David's nose, it's changing. Almost parrot-like, um, where the bone in the middle is so prominent, and he's sort of hooked over like that. Oh, He's got um, quite a long, pale, drawn face. Um, classic, I think, ghostly face. I mean, I know that sounds a bit old Hammer House-ish. He has just completely become this man. Right, yeah, I can see you. You don't frighten me in the least. Oh, I've just seen that. Yeah, you I've see just that? seen this. Yeah, yeah, that's the mouth. It's really starting to change. It's OK. They're here. What? In there. Didn't we hear something in there before? Yeah. David, can you hear me? Oh. You're right. Can you move He's your fine. fingers for He's me? He's just taking them really deeply. OK, I'm going to get up for the table event and mm -hmm. just walk slowly by David, mm -hmm. just so that if he needs any energy or any help, mm -hmm. that'll be that. Oh, I've just seen his mouth move, like... Yeah, you can, he's trying... What's that bizarre? Just that they want to do things, so... Must be very, very weird growing up in a house like this. Yeah. I couldn't must... imagine it. How the heck do you cope with that? Just hear what I'm hearing. What are you hearing? Tell me. Be nice. Come on up this. Come up the stairs yourself. Come on. If you're not afraid, is I really am so not afraid to do that. Well, so. let's go. Yeah. I'm worried about David. Yeah, I won't leave David at the moment. So he's he, this guy is just in David. There's, yeah, there's just this energy. I've never seen David like this before. Well, he, he, he's doing something too. The best thing to do what is. What was that? Footstep was. Yes. Bloody hell, that was big. They asked me to come upstairs. We're up. He's doing something too. The best thing to do is... What was that? footstep was. He's doing something to... The best thing to do is... What was that? footstep was. This is just to coax us away, don't worry, David. I feel like... I mean, the feeling I get is he's just sent out something to attract them. They're in there, and they just won't like it. OK. God, that's weird. I could hear your voices, but... Yeah, you I couldn't really respond. Really I was deep. I couldn't respond to you at all. Although our psychics may have found this as an everyday facet of their lives, the rest of the crew were amazed that David's trance-like state had allowed Gordon to visualise the figure that his colleague had described earlier in the day. But if they could see him, then why can't we? We move upstairs hoping for another response. But if they do exist, Lower Southwood's ghosts had their own way of answering our calls. Did anybody move that with. chair way back? A bit. Yeah? Come here. That was up here, no. wasn't it? That wasn't there. A bit. Yeah. That was joking. sitting up here. It was more it here? Was, yeah. Is that all you can do? Is that the best you oh, can do? Can I move the chair there? Eh? Maybe that's why you wanted to go upstairs. Yeah. We know absolutely for definite no one's been up here. No. Nobody has been up here no. since us. No. You guys never came in here when we left. We, no. we left first, didn't we? This is a stairway that can only be accessed via the same room where we had just been. Individually, we could vouch for each other's whereabouts and that no crew member could have moved that chair. 
and had it been in this position earlier, then neither Gordon nor I could have reached the television 30 minutes ago. But would the bedrooms in Cottage 2 worry me just as much as they had Rachel, Joe and Stuart? Despite the presence of my fellow investigators, my fears were to prove founded. Are there any spirit people here in this house with us now? All right. Yeah, my entire... right around me. Richard, put your hand there. Tell me if you feel cold. Can you not feel it? I can feel it. Yes. It's like, the it's like a draft here. It's but... not coming from here, really. No. no. Right around me. Keep asking. Yes. What's the matter? What's wrong? What's the matter? Just, just, just before it's you did that, I saw a red light moving across just where David is. Just my no, side I of David. I think that was a... Yeah, that was the temperature. That's me. Oh, was it? Oh, sorry. Well, what event, what did you sorry, it touched the back of my head. I don't think it was me. I don't. Further proof, it seemed, that Lower Southwood Cottage isn't for the faint-hearted. However, we still wanted more, but must also be careful of just what we were wishing for. Oh, my God! Oh, what? It's oh really my God! Shot, oh, it's really shot, shot. Oh, my God! Devon may evoke images of sun-filled days, but for most haunted, tonight is all about laying to rest the two apparent male energies that stalk the residents of this Exeter home. Three simultaneous vigils in Lower Southwood's two adjacent cottages have triggered several hot topics of debate. With ghostly shadows and anxiety dominating one vigil, electrical anomalies and poltergeists then appear to move homely objects in another. It was agreed that the kitchen of cottage number one should host a seance, but only once our mediums had offered protection to all involved. After all, this is where we had heard a medal fall to the floor. But what else would now be thrown our way? Any astrals present, please make yourself known. Please knock twice. Please, can you move something in this room rather than tap on the table? Or move the table. Something really definite. It's on the table, maybe. Yeah. It's a big old table, isn't it, to me? Yvette, can you take over the talking? I'm having a bit of a struggle. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I think Gordon's suffering as well. It's just really strong. Is there anybody here? Gordon, are you OK? Just hold on. Gordon? Gordon, Just, it's OK, just let him go. Table jumped, though. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It's just me. Okay. He's moving. Yeah, it's fine, don't worry, it's just... Do you want me to follow him with him in? No, he there. He there. Gordon's, um... Oh, oh someone's oh. throwing... Someone's oh, oh, right on my foot. It's a knife. It's a... Oh, my God! Oh, what? Oh, it's a really sharp knife! It's a really sharp knife! You bet it's on your foot. I know, it's on, but it's between our feet. Damn it. That's foot. Have you got that, Johnny? Yeah. Do you want to get in here, mate? Oh, yeah. Just keep your foot still in no, I'll take it off. It's alright. You alright? Have you got it? You got it, Kieran? Yeah. Okay. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Where's that coming from? Oh. Is it out that night? There is a slot. Well, oh. there's one missing from the block. From there? That's, that's, that's the... Yeah, so oh, they it come from before. I thought it came from... What? No, it's well, we don't know where it's come from. Let me put it back dark, anyway. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It won't. Yeah. Yeah. That's why Gordon's guide. Well, it hurt me. No, it... Yeah. yeah, I know it scares you, but they won't... I mean, what I'm saying is they don't really throw it at the back in there, kind of like that. No, but it could have gone before. That could have gone before. It's Gordon all right? Yeah, he's fine. This is the second random act of apparent poltergeist activity to take place in the kitchen, 
However, whereas the first occurred in an empty environment, this took place with everyone present. Our camera angles unfortunately failed to capture a clear view of the table jumping as Gordon moved away from it, as well as the knife's sudden movement. However, the sheer severity of throwing this razor-sharp knife ruled out any unnecessary and unwelcome pranks. And once he felt ready, Gordon was able to rejoin the group to discuss this uneasy sequence of events. Gordon, can you hear us? Yeah, I'm fine. Hello, sweetie. You OK? David, are you OK? David. 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 Can you hear us? Yeah. 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 OK, David. I'm fine. I just think I'm being used as a battery, that's all. You feel drained, do yeah? mm. All I knew was I was being lifted and moved out of yeah. something, just get out, out the get out of the way. We've been in so many places. That, I mean, that's a sharp, yeah. bloody knife. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Why that, couldn't it have been a spoon or a... Go? went on my foot. It flew right on the, between your two feet. And it felt to me as if it was coming there. from here, so yeah. if you'd have been in the way, it would have got, got you, but it didn't. It went down to here and over our feet. But it could have gone in my oh, But chin. remember, it wasn't thrown. It was pla more or less placed. It went chink on the floor. Yeah, it was placed. It wasn't thrown. They're not trying to hurt us, that's the big no. thing. Well, when they say they, there isn't, there probably isn't that, a they. What were you getting, David? I mean, it's... I was kind of gone, so it's hard to even know. It's just, it's it, to me, it, the whole night has been, well, we've said it countless times, the word energy. It's just this huge mass of energy. Mm. There is definitely a male spirit here, yeah. and he's, he's just not a very happy character. No. But I accept what you're saying, that it can be... These things have to be fed, and they're fed through emotion, yeah. and they're fed through fear. And those thoughts still resonate with all those who visited this abode. Gordon's introduction to the team only appears to have added to our collective energies, not that Lower Southwood Cottage needed them. We began with a strong link to a recent and, by all accounts, respectful astral. Yet as the early hours advanced, so too did a much older and perhaps angrier force a mostly malevolent male who, it seemed, was only too happy to move furniture, but only when we weren't looking. This fate has also beset the family that is still content to live here, so our final act was to cleanse this home, hopefully for good. And once in the cold light of day, what conclusions can be drawn from our day in Devon? In terms of the activity that the Most Haunted crew witnessed themselves, there was a whole plethora of experiences. During one of the vigils, some of the Most Haunted crew actually reported that a chair had moved in one of the upstairs bedrooms. They had been conducted a second part of the vigil downstairs in the kitchen and dining room area, and when they went back upstairs to the bedroom, a chair had actually moved from one part of the bedroom to the middle area of the bedroom. Now this is interesting activity that ties in with previous eyewitness accounts. The difficulty is we don't have objective evidence for it. We don't have any footage of the movement of that chair. So again, I have to be quite skeptical about that particular evidence. Lower Southwood Cottages was the first time that Gordon and David had worked together. And how those two gelled, well, it was amazing. The seance, I found absolutely fascinating. Uh, the frightening bit certainly was, was the knife uh, that was, uh, it wasn't thrown. There's no doubt about that. It was, it seemed as if it was more placed. Gordon, Sam. Oh, something's thrown. What's that? It's a knife. Oh, it's a knife. 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 It's we can't discount the possibility of a number of other explanations. Whenever you get the movement of an object, it's always ideal, from an evidential point of view, to get the full movement on camera. In this particular case, we didn't get that full movement, so I have to reserve judgment and be quite skeptical about that particular activity. All in all, the investigation at Lower Southwood Cottage was interesting, and I think a number of people were actually quite confused about the source of the paranormal activity, whether it's from spirit or from PK energy. And for that reason, I think it was quite an unusual and fascinating most haunted investigation. A family troubled by poltergeist called, and we were happy to answer. 
We heard their story and now we have our own. A night that brought us mystery, malice and mayhem. Until next time, sleep tight.